Howdy and welcome to another Bevy video. Today I'm showcasing my first week using Bevy 0.10 and the game I'm starting to build with it. I'm trying to clone my childhood favorite game of Paper Mario, both the 64 version and TTYD. I'm also going to take inspiration from other Mario RPGs like Superstar Saga. So far, the first thing I wanted to get right is the turn-based combat with the action commands that the player can enter to do bonus damage or block attacks. I figured this would give the new scheduling system a thorough testing, and it absolutely did. As always, I'm open sourcing the project, and you should take this as my new Bevy 0.10 intro series. The GitHub link is in the description, and I'll make branches for each video so you can reference the code as it was when the video came out. Instead of explaining things line by line, I'm going to mostly discuss my designs at the higher ECS level, and I'm not claiming this is the perfect way to create this game with Bevy. At many points throughout this video, I have parts of the design that feel weak or there may be other approaches, so I'm hoping this can be a public design review and spark some interesting discussions about structuring Bevy games and ECS design, both in the comments and on my Discord. So let's get started looking at the code. The first thing I worked on with this project is the graphics. This is mostly because I like being able to see what's going on in my game, and also because I'm making this for YouTube viewing, and print outs aren't really the best for that. I got some asset packs from Kenny, which have a license I can redistribute with my open source software. So definitely check them out if you ever need game assets for an open source project. I like to have an abstraction between the game logic and the graphics, so I tried to set up an easy way to change the sprites without having to constantly change the indices of the texture atlas sprites. For this entire project, I'm going to try to keep the animations and graphics separate from the core logic, which seems to be a good practice in other game engines, and I think it should scale better as the project grows. Here, I've created some enums for all the different sprites I have, and I made these enums a component. Now, if an entity has one of these enums and a texture atlas sprite, the simple system will keep them in sync. This hash map resource is set up in a startup system and would be amazing to read from a file or be static, but for now, it's fine just to hide it at the bottom of the art module. I also made bundles for the different art categories. There is some code duplication here, so it might make sense to create an enum to select between icons, characters, and weapons, but we'll see as I start to add new art how this plugin grows. Right now, I think these are distinct enough to keep them separate because the systems treat each category very differently, and different systems control different graphics. Now on to actually implementing the turn-based combat. I see the basic flow currently as three main states. The player selects their action, the player action happens, and the enemy responds. Of course, later on there will be more for player winning and dying, as well as leveling up, but this is the core flow for now. I use a simple pattern here where on entering the state, I'll spawn all the graphics for that state, and I'll despawn them on exiting. Despawning is a very generic system, so I made it a utility system that can despawn all entities with a given component. I haven't shown generic systems on this channel before, but they work exactly how you'd expect. Selecting is straightforward, and I'm not using Bevy UI for this. I'm just spawning the sprites of the weapon and my icon hand. I just found this to be easier, and Bevy UI is still a bit unwieldy compared to just spawning sprites. The current menu is hard-coded, but eventually I want to make a nicer graphic like you see in Paper Mario TTYD. Once a selection is made, I need to pass some data between the states here, because the attack the player chooses in the menu needs to reflect what the player action state does. I handle this by the lock and attack system, which reads the current selection and spawns a new entity with the relevant components for the action state to read. I also could have used events here, or even reused the same entity, but it's unclear if that would be better or if there's a better design for this data passing. For the actual attack, I've only implemented melee attacks and I have a three-step flow again. The warm-up where the characters get close to each other, the swing where you can enter a keystroke to block or do bonus damage, and the cooldown where they walk back to the starting position. Here, I opted not to use Bevy's state system, even though on first glance this seems like obvious states and all the systems use match statements to perform different actions depending on the stage. My rationale here is that there is no system I would run only in one of the given stages, so breaking these out would only create more complexity in spaghetti code. Maybe I'll regret this, but I kind of like the idea of only using bevy states when it actually changes the systems I would want to be running. For example, the attack selection state is very different code-wise from the attacking state. 
These systems are generic enough that I can use the same ones for both the player and the enemy attacking, which indicates a good ECS design to me. This does have a new problem, where I run the same systems for the player attacking and the enemy attacking states, so I've duplicated them in the schedule. Adding both sets to the list is an additive constraint, so nothing would run. I'm unclear if there's a great way currently in Bevy to avoid this duplication, but it's not that big a deal. It just smells like something might be a little bit wrong with the design. When the attack makes contact, I use Bevy events to create a hit event. This contains who did the hit and if the player entered the input with the right timing. I actually also track if the input was never pressed or was too early. In the future, this will play many graphical effects, so it makes sense to use an event here for me. Dealing damage just reads this event and does some basic game damage calculations. It's a bit sloppy, but it's fine for now. Again, I keep graphics separate from the core logic, but the animations here are pretty simple. I just read the timers and lurk the character and weapons between set points in an animation component. In the future, it would be nice to load these from some file. Here I use a generic system to have the correct entity animate in different turn states. It might be better designed to insert the animation component to the entity, but instead I opted to spawn a new entity with the attack and animation. My logic here is that it's easier to extend if the attack is a distinct entity that can be created and despawned, instead of bundling it to a player and enemy which will get more complex. Keeping track of what components to constantly be adding or removing from the player seems like a nightmare to me, but it's unclear if this approach will also be nightmarish. The last thing I want to talk about is project organization. Right now the project is still small, so the organization is simple. I've created a lib.rs which contains a prelude, which just re-exports Bevy and everything public in my modules. This is lazy, but it seems to be fine for this stage of the project. I have my combat plugin, which is all of the logic and state management of the combat flow. I have an art plugin, which contains all of the graphics updating and the animation code. In the future, this seems to be growing rapidly, so I'll probably subdivide this out in the next week's work. I've kind of started to break this out already because I've created a weapons module, but it's unclear if this is the right place to draw the line, so I haven't committed to that yet. This is pretty much where the project is currently. I've made a fair number of components, and it's becoming a bit unwieldy to keep track of all of them and what systems they trigger. So going forward, I'm going to look at making better visualizations to keep track of everything happening in the project. Overall, I'm very happy with the new Bevy update, and I hope this project helps people get their heads around designing games with Bevy, and sparks some discussion in the community to share ideas and tips. As always, thank you so much to my wonderful Patreons who make this possible, and thank you for watching.